Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of some one gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor," I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this, and nothing more. If you have never read this poem, I highly recommend doing so, and I will leave a link to it in the description. This is an excerpt from Edgar Allan's Poe, The Raven. Edgar Allan Poe was born in Boston in 1809 and died and buried in Baltimore in 1849. His short life, although rather tragic, he was able to write many successful poems, and he was an American Gothic poet that had become extremely popular and immortalized in literature due to his outstanding works. That includes works such as The Raven, The Telltale Heart, and other very, very popular titles. Star Stable released their Ravens in the Halloween event in 2021, and featuring a raven named Poe. This, of course, Poe the Raven, was a beautiful reference to this amazing author. However, this has a dark twist. The Raven, after all, was a demon, so what does that make our beloved Poe? Be that word our sign of parting. Bird or fiend, I shrieked, upstarting. Get thee back into the temptus and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take the form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Introduced in the haunted trail ride, the altar found just off the path requires several items to be able to summon and own your very own bone corvid. This requires some bones, feathers, and soul shards. It also requires the witch eye garment, a large red gem that almost seems to replicate a heart. While many may not exactly see what is being referenced here, it seems to tie back to the old myths that witches could raise creatures from the dead when given certain items relating back to that creature in their life. This can also be related to the story of Dr. Frankenstein creating life in a stitched together creature that he had built. In Scottish folklore, a Kelpie is a very dangerous shape-shifting water horse that can appear on land as a white mare. The Kelpie appears to their human victims and entices them to climb onto their back. Then, once the human is secured to their body, their fur becomes coated in a thick, gooey substance that prevents the rider from getting off. Only then will the horse then carry these people down to a watery grave. In Halloween of 2021, Star Stable released some Halloween Yorvik wild horses. One of them that they had released was a Kelpie, or at least in reference to a Kelpie design. All the more horrifying is that these creatures can lie down almost as if begging you to go for your last ride. Umbra and Aliyah were added to Star Stable in March of 2020. Umbra, says Star Stable, is a volcanic horse that comes from the moon and now lives in the wild of Jorvik. Umbra is a reference to the appearance of the demonic horse entity found in Project Red's 2015 game release, The Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt, found in the Blood and Wine expansion. What I'm about to describe to you is mature content from a game that is rated for audiences of 18 and older. Viewer discretion is advised. This also contains a few spoilers, and I'll provide a timestamp on screen to be able to skip this content. For those of you who don't know what The Witcher is, The Witcher is a book series written by a Polish author in, 18, in 1986 about a race of mutated men who kill monsters for a living. This wonderful story was translated into English and then made into a hit game series as well as a TV show on Netflix in 2019. The Witcher 3 was the latest addition to the Witcher game series, created by CD Projekt Red and released in 2015. This game won the Game of the Year awards for wonderful graphics and outstanding gameplay. In 2016, a DLC was added to the game called Blood and Wine. Within this DLC, you can find a peculiar side quest given to you from a woman who has been suffering for years because she is haunted by an invisible demon. Now. The demon hasn't been allowing her a wink of sleep. This demon drinks her blood and feeds off of her existence. This demon is then to reveal to himself to have been an Umbra. Already we have our first reference. Taking the form of a ghostly stallion, this spirit could not move peacefully into the afterlife because he had flogged his horse to death after losing a jousting tournament. 
While it is clear that they do not share the same story, the artistic visuals are way too similar between the two Umbras to be simply a coincidence. Not to mention, do they only maintain the same name, their color scheme is almost completely identical, and their markings are extremely similar. Star Stable not, might not have directly copied off of The Witcher, but it is clear they definitely used some of their ideas, or at least took some creative liberties and inspirations from this game. Before anyone makes a comment saying that maybe it was The Witcher that copied off of Star Stable, the Blood and Wine DLC was released in 2016, whereas Star Stable had released their version of the Umbra in 2020, four years after this DLC had been released. Do you see the similarities? What are your thoughts? While it may not be a big reference, you can find Dolly the Sheep in Star Stable. For those of you who don't know, Dolly the Sheep was a result of cloning. Uh, in 2003, they were able to very successfully clone the first animals, and one of which was a sheep. Uh, Dolly the Sheep was one of the only successful clones, and lived a shorter life than average sheep, but long enough for to be considered insignificant for any clone standards. She was considered the first successful due to how long her lifespan was, and she died in 2003. Now you can visit her body in Scotland, where she is stuffed and put up for display on a museum. However, in Star Stable, you can clearly see that this sheep at this location, right here, is very clearly still alive. Have you ever noticed that there are forts on the map? Fort Maria, Fort Pinta? Well, it's in-game canon that Jorvik was involved in World War II. Did you notice this bunker that was sitting on the water in West Epina? Maybe it just might have a really dark secret. World War II ran from September of 1939 and ended in September of 1945. This six-long war had included most of the world's major leading countries at the time. Having to defend themselves on all sides, the seafronts and the skies had to be monitored extremely heavily. So, that included the building of bunkers along the shores. On June 6, 1944, U.S. troops had landed on the beaches of Normandy to flush out the Nazi soldiers. Countless lives were lost on this day. Which makes you ask, where is Jorvik? And why are there Nazi bunkers along their shores? How was Jorvik involved during this war? Who did they serve? And how were they able to get here? This also means that there were Nazis on our beloved map at one point in time. If that's not a creepy thought, I don't know what is.